In this segment, we will be continuing on in the purple slice, and we'll be examining here the uh, basic way that we must determine null and alternate hypotheses for our hypothesis test. And I often call this writing the claim section. So if you call, uh, call your attention back here to my the notes on this, which by the way you can print out for yourself, in the they are stored away in the uh, document sharing section. You can have copies of this form and use these. You can either print them out right directly on them, uh, use it for an outline as you go through your problems, and you can use the on your tests as well. Now the claim section, as I've told you before, is very much like the arrest phase in the in the legal. Uh, in the legal system and there are certain steps that we must go through. First of all, we have to have the claim in English. So there has to be an ideal idea which is being placed on trial. So let's go back, take a look at Alex and see what that is. It says a recent article in a university newspaper claimed, there's a key word, claimed that the proportion of students who commute more than 15 miles to school is no more than 15%. Now suppose that we suspect otherwise and we wish to carry out a hypothesis test. State the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis that we would use for this test. Well once again here, what I would suggest that you do is to follow my form step by step and notice that on this form the first thing that we want to do is to look at this claim section. Now in the claim section the first part of the claim section is to go over there and identify the claim in English. So I'll try to go in the uh, into Alex here and find exactly the sentence that uh, where the claim is. Oftentimes uh, they'll actually use the word claim and uh, so that kind of gets us on the right track here. A recent uh, article in a news, university newspaper claimed, and here it comes, that the proportion of students and so I'll begin to write part of that out here uh, as I work through this in my form. And so we look uh, we look over here at our notes, and we can see here that uh, I've just taken part of that, left out prepositional phrases and so on, tried to kind of distill the uh, simple sentence out of here that the proportion uh, of our students is no more than 15%. So my English claim section, I will try to uh, catch the main ideas of that, maybe not write every word, uh, every prepositional phrase and so on, but uh, the essence of that is that the proportion of our students uh, who commute and so on is no more than 15%. Now what we must do next here is to convert this particular statement in English to a mathematical statement in symbols. And for that we need to be a little bit careful, so I'll call your attention to another set of notes that you can find in document sharing. A kind of a summary of all the symbols that we use in statistics. Over in this column we have sample statistics like X bar and S and N and P hat, in which we've talked about before. Over on this side we have our population parameters that we're going to deal with. And a population parameter then is a population mean, a population standard deviation, a population proportion in our case. So notice that all claims are made about population parameters, never about sample statistics. So we will make our claim about p. We will not make our claim about p hat. So let's go over here <clears throat> back to our notes. Notice here that we're going to make the claim and symbol about p, the population proportion. Notice that it says it is no more than 15%. Now some of these words are tricky here, but if it's no more than 15%, that means that it is less than or equal to 15%, and that 15% will typically be expressed as a decimal. So the P, the population proportion, is less than or equal to 0.15. Now, we have to uh, form the opposite of this 
particular symbolic statement. And we have to be a little bit cautious about how we do that because in normal everyday things, we say like the opposite of up is down, left is right, night is day, hot is cold, dark is light, and so on. But when it comes to dealing with math, we have the mathematical trichotomy. And what that basically says is that there are three ways that numbers can relate to each other. A can be greater than B, A can be less than B, or A can be equal to B. So if we have a situation where A is not greater than B, so if we take that out, we can see then it has to be less than or equal to. And likewise in our situation over here, if it's not less than and it's not equal to, then it's opposite, or it's the only choice that's left then is greater than. So we're going to have P is greater than 0 0.15 for its opposite. So remember here, the trichotomy of numbers applies when you form the opposite. Now we have one last step here. We've got two different statements. Okay, we've got two different ideas which are exactly opposite of each other. Now it turns out that in statistics the idea, the statement that goes on trial is the one which is known by the very mysterious term the null hypothesis. Now null hypothesis is always going to be the statement which contains, as some books say, the condition of equality, or as I would say, look for the one that's got the equals in it, and label that the null hypothesis, which has the symbol h sub 0. Now the other one, whichever one is left that does not contain the system of equality or the condition of equality is called the alternate hypothesis and it will carry the tag H1. Now be careful in Alex because they always ask for the null hypothesis first but while it happened this time that the symbolic claim was in fact the null and it was first it typically isn't always that way so you're going to want to be careful and then fill in the parts of this claim section that we want in Alex. So let's go ahead and take a look at that once again and see what we have. Well once again our null hypothesis here we said was P, the population proportion, do not choose P yet. We're going to have less than or equal to and then we're going to have the 0 0.15. The alternate hypothesis then is P strictly greater than the 0 0.15 and we should be good to go. Let's check that and we can see that we are good. Let's do another one of these because uh, there are several varieties of these. As you can see here on our list of, of variables that uh, there we could have claims about population means. We could have claims about population standard deviations, claims about population proportions. So we can have lots and lots of different types of claim sections. Let's go back here and take a look at another one uh, of those over here in Alex. And let's see what we have. Now a college professor states that this year's entering students appear to be smarter than entering students from previous years. The college's records indicate that the mean IQ for for entering students from earlier years was 110.3. Now suppose that we want to sample a small number of this year's entering students and to carry out a hypothesis test to see if this professor's statement can be supported. So we're going to state the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis that we would use for this. And so again what we're going to have to do is to summarize the uh, claim in English and basically what we're going to do is to notice here that in Alex it says this year's class uh, professor states or claims that this year's entering students this year's class appear to be smarter than previous years. So smarter. Let's uh, let's think about that for a second. Well basically what we're saying here is that we measure this intelligence with an IQ value. And once again we're talking about this year's class kind of as a group. And so obviously we're not talking about just individual students.
students. We're talking about the, the class as a whole. We're talking about the entire class's average or mu because, of course, when we think about dealing with these different um, groups here, we always have to make claims about population parameters. So we're basically making a claim here about the population mean or the average of all of these students coming in this year. So it is a claim about mu. So while it says this year's class, we have to kind of read between the lines and we have to then uh, kind of come up with on our own here that we're talking about the average for the entire population of students in this year's class and that they are smarter. In other words, that their average IQ value is greater than last year. So then we have to go back and see well, what was the IQ of students last year. And we go back over here and notice uh, in the second sentence that records indicate that the mean IQ for entering students from previous years was 110.3. So what we have to conclude here then is that this 110.3 is going to be uh, the IQ that we're comparing to. So there is our claim in symbols. And notice how we have to use some interpretation along the way. We have to turn some of these uh, words into symbols, some into numbers, and some of these then, of course, into these uh, population parameter variables. So we have that. Once again, then, we go to the opposite. And remember the mathematical trichotomy that we talked about earlier here, that there are three ways that numbers relate to each other. A greater than b, less than b, or equal to b. Well, in this case here, notice that the mu is greater than 110.3, so the opposite of that must be that mu is less than or equal to 110.3. And once again here, to find the null hypothesis, we must follow the condition of equality. Watch where the equal sign goes. So this right here is h sub 0, our null hypothesis, and then this one must be the alternate hypothesis. Now notice that Alex always asked for the null hypothesis first, but in this case it was actually the second statement. So as we go back to put this in, we have to get them in the order that Alex wants our answer. So h sub 0 is our null hypothesis. Remember that we're making a claim about a population mean. We're claiming that it is less than or equal to 110.3. The alternate hypothesis, or h sub 1, is going to be mu. And of course, that's going to be greater than. That's greater than 110.3. And so we should have our claim section established. Let's check it. Okay, so you can go ahead and, and work on this section, being careful to get your claim section done according to those rules.